Welcome back to Dungeon World, Misclicks Edition. Or Misclicks Dungeon World Edition? We never really came up with the real... In Control Edition! It says it right on the... Yeah, In Control is basically the name of the episode. So it's oh. Dungeon World, and then maybe we'll have other... So DM welcome caster. back to Misclicks Dungeon World In Control Edition. Yes. yes. Cool. Yeah. I'm glad I got that. Dee dee dee. All right. <clears throat> so... Did you just ask him to load the... Or, so he told you it's going to take about 10 minutes. Would you like he, some uh, help, dear? And then I think about switching into a deer, but don't do it. Oh, help? Yeah, help's nice. It's really... Gosh, that is... That is so kind of you to offer that. But this is this is my boat. It's my job. It's my task. It's, it's my passion. It's what I feel. It's what I love. It's what I do. And you notice as every time you ask him something, he just kind of gets lost in his words. And he's just, Are we already on the boat? Nope. Okay, I get yeah. on the boat with my cougar. Oh, uh, hey, uh, keep that, keep that gosh darn cougar, please. Uh, I'm sorry, the, she doesn't speak common. On the, I, uh, I, I don't even look at him. I just continue my way. Um, can you tell the, the, the person, the cloak lady, the person that's dressed as a coat hanger uh, or hook? <laughs> uh, gosh, I'm actually at a loss for words. It's like I a, telepathy to Stephanie. Um, it's coming up in conversation. Should we refer to you as a male or a female? Uh, well, I don't. Wh what's the difference? I'm not. Do you even have sure. something? Do you have balls that hang between your legs? And then I check. Like, <laughs> no, I don't. Her, I say. Oh, uh, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, if you could How just tell her to keep the cougar as far away as as possible from me, like if it could be in the water. And we could tie a rope around it and just drag it behind us. That would be okay, too. Oh, That's no need to, ar to arm animals here. We can take care. I'll keep a watch over the cougar for you, sir. <sighs> you are such a dear, a love, a sweetheart. And he's kind of mumbling to himself as he turns back to unwrap the rope and get back to work. But you can still hear, like, oh, yeah, sweetheart, yeah, good person. Mm. And he's going to work I on that. I, uh, I, whisper, I whisper to Sylph, and I'm like, do you think everyone calls me dear because of these? I'm too sure. I look up at her her antlers and I look down <laughs> at the spots on the back of her neck and I say, "No." Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, okay. Uh, I guess so as you guys are kind of a couple of minutes like, passed yes, by, and you're you're talking about how ugly, but but you know, in her own way, kind of adorable fawn is and and deer like. Um, and you hear out of from behind you because both your you know all your backs are kind of faced and you're in this conversation. You hear all of a sudden kind of a loud like all these R's just start firing out from behind you from, from a ton of people. Biar, biar, Captain Morgan, biar, Captain Morgan. And uh, if you turn around and look, you'll see cascading do. down like little jelly bean people just off the boat. On ropes and, and bounding and leaping. It's, it's quite amazing the show they're putting on. A uh, very Cirque du Soleil uh, sort of thing. Uh, and they're all coming to the dock and they're lining up and, and again just firing off R's everywhere. And there it is, of course, the very well dressed, very buckled, big plume hat, uh, peg legged Captain Morgan comes walking up. And he's, he's nodding to each of them and, and saying R to each of them. And they're biar, 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 biar. And he's just kind of walking down the line doing this. And he gets to the end and he looks up and, and an R gets kind of lost in his throat. And he goes, biar. And he looks ahead and sees you guys on the boat. I and wave he, to him. He, yeah, he waves back and he starts pegging over to you guys and says, he says, my friends, yar, I noticed, uh, I noticed you here. Yar. Oh. Uh. I Good say, sir, yar. we have, Hello. We have sir? found, and then I look around and I, I scoot like closer it. to him a little quiet. We have found the most beautiful woman in all the lands. We are taking this fishing boat out to yar. get her, and we will be right back. Post haste. And he leans in close to you, and you can hear, and you, not even hear, you smell just copious amounts. Like, what probably took years to do this, but he gives off the smell of whiskey. His body odor is whiskey, uh, but he doesn't seem to be drunk, but you're not sure because as a pirate, he moves quite strangely, especially with that peg leg. And he leans in and he says, Yar, my loins are on fire 24-7. If you could speed it up, I could put it out. I can get you a cleric for that if you need. 
No, friend. I'm trying to say I'm really horny. Oh. I'm not actually on fire. Jar. Jar. <laughs> and he leans back and kind of gives an appraisal nod. And Ross Bob stands up and says, uh, Captain Morgan, your boat is elegant, gorgeous, and beautiful, and it sits next to mine, and I appreciate it. But uh, these friends of mine, uh, they've charged me to take them out to the other side of the city. Um, and uh, with their cougar, too, actually. So I'll be doing that pretty soon. He says, yeah, I've heard that as much, yes. And then, of course, you'll bring them right back, perhaps with some... Uh, with some packages of sorts. Yar. And he goes, he turns back to you guys and says, is this a round trip? Did Yar. I? Yar. It's uh, a round and, trip. And I say, don't you remember that we asked you where we could find some romantic companionship for this evening? I do. Yeah. You guys well, there you have it. There you have it. You see, Captain, we are working on the challenge that you have set for us. I Captain have your picture Morgan. right here. He's kind of twirling his uh, ha handlebar, not even handlebar, whatever it's called, his twirling mustache. He says, "Yar, no, no prostitutes, friends. Yar, if you can have plenty of that, and if I want to scurvy, I wasn't looking I'd, for a prostitute. That's I why you don't trust I'd make the love bar. to my own boat. <laughs> if you know what I'm yarring about, that's why you don't <laughs> trust a bard with finding a woman. A bard, a bard. Yar. Sing us a song, friend. If you're a bard, I'd love to hear it. Oh yes, yeah, sing us a song. I love music. Ross Bob seems to kind of generally very light golf clap as well, and he starts humming a tune for you." Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on, Sylph. Okay. Um, Sylph sort of buries his face mm -hmm. in his hands and he says, uh, Captain, sir, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry. I hate singing. Um, but you're really a bard. I hate singing. I consider that, myself like more a of a storyteller. Like really, uh, mm, just sit right back and you hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip that started aboard this profit port, a tiny, tiny ship. The mate was a mighty sailing man, the skipper brave and sure. My passengers just sailed that day for a three-hour tour, a three-hour tour outside the walls of the As city. As he was singing this, so the, the pirates behind them all start dancing. It's almost like they're activated by the song. They start just bouncing around and galloping. And the I song mid-song and I say, what, what is your men seem to be incredibly sprightly, Captain? And he looks back and he says, Yar, they're dancing lunatics. They're idiots, all of them, but... Uh, they're all in the family. I love them. I love them like brothers because half of them are. We are. I go to, uh, I go to, uh, to and earn say, yeah. and say, this what is just, music. So I'm like, what just happened? C'est de la musique. And then I'm like, répète après moi, music. <laughs> music. Yes. Hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> music. And then I go, music, 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 <laughs> music, music. Sing music, again. Music. Sing again. <laughs> More, more. Music, music, music. <laughs> Captain Morgan, at, at the conclusion of the song, and his, you can see again behind him, the pirates just kind of stop dancing, and they kind of stand there and look awkward for a second. He's like, you're a bit of a brief bard, aren't you? Your songs aren't lengthy in tone. No. I can respect that. And he kind of says, all right, I will... Uh, I've got duties on the boat, and I'll prepare the boat for seafaring weather, but uh, shall I expect you back by nightfall? Yes. Yar! And he turns around, and they, yar! And they all come yarring to each other, and yar! doing the like, somersault back onto the yar! ship, and they're shimmying up it on ropes, and he's kind of fat and old, so he just kind of sits there and waits, and they lower down a plank, and he, he gets back up on the boat. And Ross Bob says, guys, uh, I am ready to go. I have never been more ready for this trip we are about to take. Ever. All right. Let's do it, Bob Ross. Let's go. Okay. And he slowly kind of meanders over and takes his net, throws on the boat, casts uh, or pulls up the anchor, and, and off you go. So to give you an idea of the ship, it's like a 15-foot, like a, like a uh, I don't know what you call it, like a skiff maybe, something like that. Mm. Just like this, just a shape like this, um, and it has its it's a sail based ship because he f sails it by himself. Uh, so it's kind of at the mercy of you know it's it's a short range ship. It's not anything to go further out because you would need a crew. Mm -hmm. um, but he just loads it up, shoots up the, the the yep. Thank you guys. There's our first dick of the day. That's actually really good. I should have seen that coming. No pun intended. <laughs> and. Uh, you guys are off. It's uh, to get around kind of the wall that leads out into the water. 
um, to get around that. And to, you're just getting outside the city is all you want, right? Yeah. It's not a far journey. It's like a, you know, 300 yards. 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 So <laughs> it only takes uh, 35 minutes or so. So you guys start to just kind of do it. The wind is very, it's a very light day, so it's not going super fast. And you're now at sea. What do you do? I start to climb the mat, the middle mat. I guess you I'll just have start a roll climbing. For that. <laughs> yeah. I just like, I'm like impressed by the sea. This is the first time I get on a boat, so I just start climbing the mat. I feel what is your really cougar doing while you do that? I'm taking okay, care of the cougar. I'm taking care of the cougar, and I'm like right next to it, feeling really uncomfortable. I think I'm getting seasick. I say that to, to Finkelmer. Like oh, I don't feel too good, guys. I I don't like I don't like this. Are you not a Does sailor? The cougar allow? No, of course it? not. I'm from the mountains. It. Guys, yes. is the cougar? Is it okay with the, uh, with fawn holding it and stuff? Yeah, she. Yeah, the right. cougar's yeah. used to it. Um, I I telepathy to. Only fun, though. Uh, <laughs> I yeah, tell everything to Ur and ask, uh, is this the first time you've been on a ship before? Yes. Okay. That's it. My answers are really simple. Yes. Then I, I nudge Sylph and say, Sylph, can you sail? What? Man, can, no. Can you sail God, a ship? I'm, I'm an open roads kind of gentleman. All right. It's good to know if something happens is that we don't know how to sail the ship. I take a Do swig. Do that? Yeah. Out of my out of my wine like, skin, and I I pass it over to Fawn. I say, Fawn, here, this will this will help clear you, like, up your anything stomach. Anything happened to this si this 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 ship? I'm, I'm I don't know how this works. This yeah, I, I'm not. Really no, we, we, no, we can't do anything to the ship. We have to let it stay intact. No fireballs. So there. about halfway. Nor there. should you hurt this man. He's awesome. He's, no, he's great. great. I love this guy. Yeah, about halfway there, another ship kind of comes and and waves down Ross Bob and. Ross Bob waves at it, and it pulls up next to you guys, and you'll notice it's another skiff, kind of small, uh, and on the side of it, it is, it is called the McDonald's, and it's a red and yellow ship, very bright colored, <laughs> and on it is, <laughs> is three people, super friendly, uh, and Ross Bob turns to you guys and says, this is kind of a new thing that they're doing, but uh, I guess people are ordering food anywhere right now, and they sell really <laughs> cheap and good food. Uh, it's my treat to you guys since you're paying so well and he hands them about three silver and the guys hand over these patties of meat uh, that were cooked previously but are now just kind of lukewarm uh, and they've all got big smiles on their face and they're handing over just you know about a pound of this meat and Ross Bob takes a bite of one and and offers it out to the rest of you guys what do you do? Mm, I'm sorry I don't eat meat oh I take it so he, he holds it out to Fawn and Fawn you, you look at him and say sorry I don't eat meat Okay, so in this day and age right now, breaking from the game, we think vegetarians are weird, right? Back yeah. then, being a vegetarian or someone that doesn't eat meat was like one of the strangest, it was not one of the strangest, but a very odd concept. Yeah. Meat, like, meat was like a uh, uh, like, delicacy. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I don't, I, what do you, uh, what do you mean you don't eat meat? What do you... I don't want that, animals to be hurt for just us eating them. I feel looks like at it, it's a cooked patty, and he's like, "Well, this is—it's already a, the, the worst." Well, thing. I know the deed has been done, but there's no way for me to fix it. But I just as don't you guys are having this discussion, I grab the meat from your hand and I just eat it. And she starts eating. Awesome. And Ross Bob, like, kind of is shocked by this because he's again just completely taken aback by this strange deer-like person that's hideously ugly. <laughs> It won't eat meat, and the three McDonald, the three people on the ship called McDonald's. All their smiles start to seem to kind of fade, and they're looking at this very peculiar situation. And they're like, and and, "You have seen the visions of the future," I whisper to them. And then they look at you, and, and they're kind of weirded out. And Ross Bob just kind of hands offers meat to everybody else. What do you all do? I eat the meat that he offers me. I say thank you, Ross Bob. That's quite kind. Is that the shore I see right over there? Do you think is it is it? I mean, is that a good spot where we can put in? It will be, friend. Um, did you want to take some meat? Oh yeah, please. Thank you. And I start, you know, eating it. Okay. I want Seriously. everyone set for Fawn to do a Constitution check. Oh shit! Uh, I fucking <laughs> knew this was coming. I knew this was coming as soon as you said McDonald's. McDonald's uh, failed. failed. So it's just a D. D26? 2D6 plus D2 your constitution modifier. Okay. Constitution modifier zero. 
Seven okay. partial success. All right. Waiting on you, Stephanie. Oh, you. Okay, so two partials. So we'll get to you in a second, Stephen. But for the other two, um, you eat it. It tastes. Here's your choices. It is okay. Uh, oh God, these. This my brain just doesn't work well this way. Um, you can either vomit it because you really don't like the taste and risk. Uh, upsetting the people that have offered you this, or you can be constipated for the rest of the day. <laughs> I'm going to be constipated for the rest I'll of the day. So you're both constipated. <laughs> okay. Steven, on the <laughs> other hand. That's what you get for eating meat. <laughs> Mr. Sylph, I apologize. So, so Sylph, so this meat gets kind of passed around. They're all still kind of looking at Fawn Peculiar, but she's used to it because she looks like a deer person. I'm just um, devouring this meat, just like <laughs> really shoving it in. Everyone's eating. Uh, uh, <laughs> These burgers are really good. Do you have any more? Er and, Finkelmer, er and Finkelmer, upon finishing it, they feel grumbling in their stomach, and they and they kind of they get quiet because they can slowly feel. What's that? Can I hear that? The grumbling. Do you have really good hearing? I don't know, but like you know, I'm shoveling my face full of meat, and then I hear this. No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. Uh, but I you just guys, keep going. As a result of this, are going to be minus one charisma for the rest of the day because you're self-conscious about the fact that you feel like there's a brick inside your stomach and you're you're very concerned about that. So it's going to kind of chip away at your ability to be charismatic. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. <laughs> Sylph eats this and yeah. uh, is just wolfing it down, like you said. Mm. And then it time kind of stops. And, and he says, and that's when he makes his point. He's like, hey, hey. Ross, uh, is that a good spot to go land? And he's like, he's like, it sure is, friend. It sure is. Let me let me close this up. And he's taking a long time to say this, and you get frustrated because you could feel the slippery uh, yep. evacuation uh, need hmm. of Bob. explosive diarrhea Mr. in your back. <laughs> is it? Is that a good place to land? Like right now? Right now? Right now? Friend, it'll be a great spot as soon as we can get over to it. Ah. Uh, and uh, you expect that to be when exactly? Maybe <laughs> the next 30 seconds or so. No. 30 seconds might not be enough. You know what? I'm just going to drop trowel off the edge of the boat, if that's okay. <laughs> you, don't, you don't mind if I... <laughs> there's some serious urgency here, Mr. <laughs> so <laughs> he's in this, and he rips down his pants and explosive diarrhea is into the ocean. And everyone... The McDonald's no! The McDonald's people rip up their rope and they push <laughs> off the boat manually and start paddling away from you guys. Completely disgusted. A few of them. So he's out. like hanging off the side of the ship. <laughs> yeah, his, his I push him over. I tried. Make a, no, that's like I an tried attack. To right? Pull him in. I tried to stop him. He from doesn't. Even, he doesn't actually need to make an attack I because want to stop from stop him from getting out of the ship. I'm trying to make him shit in the boat. I don't want him to shit in the what? ocean. You're trying. Uh, what? Yeah, I don't want him to shit guys. in the ocean. Here's what's happening. Jen, excuse me, Juan reaches to pull him into the boat to see that to make him shit all over the boat. At the same exact moment, have Finkelmer trying to shove him out of the boat. So Stephen, trying, but a speed test, like dexterity for who goes first, maybe. So no, so basically they're just kind of going simultaneously. They're both trying to grab me and do different things with me. There um, we are. I can try to either aid or interfere with either of them. What do you choose, friend? But neither of them need to make an attack because I'm debilitated and I can't respond. So they just get to do their actions. So I'm going to interfere with, uh, with Fawn and I'm going to try to aid Finkelmer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You'd rather be pushed in than pulled a plus modifier then to his role, would you say, or how does that work? So here's what I'm gonna do. I get to either give people plus let's see, what's the aid and aid and interfere? I think I can either give someone plus one or minus two to their roles. Okay, you choose. Give her so minus let's two. see. Um roll two D six. Jen hasn't failed plus anything. Why are you ones? trying to get pull out? Anyway. So this is my role to see if I can interfere with um Fawn. And I succeed flying colors. Oh my colors. god, so I don't Fawn, need to roll? Fawn no, gets a minus two because I'm interfering. So I don't I think do, you'll actually need to roll. I do because 
Two I'm then minus. going to give a plus one to yeah. uh, to Finkelmer. So I think I'm just going to go straight over the edge. So I can do two d six minus two. You, I guess you could try it. Okay, so um, oh! yes. she got oh, it. Anyways. Neil, you got to roll. Yep. Two d six plus one. Yep. Actually, we you have a bond. Oh! With it, right? Okay. You're both successful. So, so I guess you're both like just struggling over me. Here's what I'll say. Uh, I'll stop if Fawn, if Fawn tries to pull you in. Finkelmer tries to push you out. What ends up happening is that you fall over sideways onto the side of the boat. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to have a 2d6. And if it's, uh, if it's on the lesser half of 12, you fall into the boat. If it's on the greater half of 12, you fall out of the boat. Fair enough. I'd like to also make a suggestion for you as GM, Please. Jeff. Um, in the situation where I aid or interfere and I, ha I have a 7 to 9, then there's some sort of danger that affects me as a result of the aiding or interfering. So since I tried to aid um, okay. Finkelmer and I rolled a 7, I think it's only appropriate that I get poop all over myself. Yes, I agree. <laughs> okay. So Good. you're at you are at minus three charisma then for until you clean yourself. <laughs> we'll say. Which That's hopefully fair. will be in just a moment. Yes. So roll two d six. What did you say was over the edge? Lesser half of twelve is you fall into the boat. Okay. Uh, higher half greater is out. Yeah. So you Straight fall out the boat. So you <laughs> fall to the side of the boat and then roll off covered in shit and you're down in the water. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like. No! Ross, what Bob are is... you talking about? This is better. No, this is... the fish, the sea. Don't. They're gonna I... eat it. Look I... how big the I ocean cling up is. And, like, hang on I to the side care. of the boat. I don't care. Would you like go, to oh. be the fish that cling receives the, the boat? shit? <laughs> fish eat shit. Literally eat shit. So he's clinging on to the boat, shit. still shitting. By the way, it's a long, horrific shit uh, into the ocean. At least it's free flowing now. It is free flowing. <laughs> free uh, flowing. You guys are arguing about this. Ross Bob did get some shit sprayed into his boat, so he's he's just like, uh, I did not ask for any tones of brown here. This is beyond. Uh, that's not what I wanted. This is supposed to be a clean boat. I don't like this. Um, I'm going to. I mean, what do you do, by the way, uh, Er? So you you see this tug of war of shit happen. <laughs> There's shit all over the boat. What happens now? Can uh, Steven, Can my cook like is my cougar only attacking? Can he could he like bite um, uh, Fawn's clothes and like prevent her from falling? Like you know, is is he only attacking or is, can he do other stuff? So let me see here. Um, I'm looking at the ranger sheet. You actually get choose trainings for your animal. Yeah, I chose. Uh, Hold on. What is your animal's cunning? Uh, I chose guard, and okay. uh, yeah, I chose guard, that's it. Okay, so he can only guard and fight humanoids, so he can't, I don't think he can grab, well, like maybe he could try to get in front of her or something like that. Because it says you can talk to it, but you can always act as you wish. Yeah. So, so what, 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 Okay. This is up to Jeff. What do you think, Jeff? What do you so think, Jeff? Your cougar is trying to grab. Uh, grab fawns uh, to help her, so to make sure she doesn't like fall, and like uh, to help her with, with whatever she's doing right now. Okay, so here's what we'll do then, uh, to continue the action. Because he did shit on the inside of the boat quite a bit, and it's diarrhea, yeah. um, and fawn was trying to push him into the boat. Um, I'm going to say that she will have to take a dexterity test to see what will happen here, but the cougar will add a plus one to whatever modifier she had because okay. it's trying to help her. Good. And actually, you need to take the same test, uh, Finkelmer, but you're not getting any modifiers unless you have dexterity or something like that. In fact, you're at minus one because you're pushing him out, so I'm going to see if you, if you slip outward of the boat. What?! Yeah, you were pushing him outward, so it stands to reason that there's a more of a chance that you would fall forward. So I do I was two d six. So I don't see yeah, why. just two d six. Always two d six. Eight. That's partial. So I'll give you a choice in a second here. Let's see what a fawn does. But I mean, I was pulling people into the boat, so I don't see in which case I would just fall to see over. if you fall down. I mean, if you if you fail horrifically, then you probably could fall out. But roll a two. Yeah, plus roll one. two. Six. That's a fail. No, you get a plus mm -hmm. one for the. Oh. the so seven, so both seven. Partials. So uh, for for Finkelmer, because you did a partial and you're trying to push him out, 
you, you kind of start to lose your balance and you look at your options. One of them is to just fall straight out into the water, or the nope. other one is to kind of fall on your side or backside, but you are going to roll in shit as well. That's fine. I fall on my backside. Okay, so Finkelmer falls over and is rolling around in the diarrhea of Sylph. Uh, Fawn, <laughs> your, op- your options are actually just the same, basically. Well, no, no. Instead of falling out, your option is to... Uh, either the cougar does pull you back and you land on your butt in the poop, or I'm going to say that you compromise, you kind of shift your weight, and you dive onto the cougar, potentially smushing it into the poop, but it cushioning your fall. I'm going to fall on my butt on, in the poop. Okay, so the, mm. the two of you fall on your asses and are covered in shit as well. <laughs> I, I stand up when I can, no, take my poop-covered cloak, fell. and just toss it into the ocean. I thought he All fell right. on the side, though. I fell right. on my butt. He fell on the side. So yeah, yeah. So sure. More but he takes than... his cloak off and he hurls it out into the ocean. Um, Ross oh. Bob, again, is just like, this, uh, so many shades of brown. So, so Dude, brown. Wait, if I remove this rub... Please, bottle. please, less poop on the deck. Please. <laughs> oh, from, but I don't want to throw it in the sea. From the side, I say, Bob, 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 Bob Mr. Rob, oh, my, Mr. Ross. Comes Can, running over... Can you and just steer us to the shore? I'll just blah, 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 I'll just stay right here. Okay, it's going to make steering hard. And as he kind of directs the, the sail in the direction of land, and again, McDonald's is long gone, by the way. They got the F out of there. Um, the weight, how much do you weigh, Mr. Bardman? Uh, wet and soggy, probably like 160 pounds. Because you're a big six-foot guy, I guess, with a beer yep. gut. So yeah, just... Uh, it's like a 15-foot boat with that. I don't think so. I think you could hang off the side of it. So, yeah. So, you just steer it towards the land and start heading over there. Um, yeah. So, Fawn, you're covered in shit. Uh, you're going to at least be at minus one um, until yeah. you figure this out. And while... Uh, my, cougar Finkelmer... starts, my cougar starts leaking their poop. She's like... Oh, God. That's uh-huh. so gross. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if the cougar's going to eat the stuff, so will the fish. I don't know what you were worrying about. Ross Bob sees this, and from from the like, the uh, you know the directional I don't know what to call it the rod of, of the, the the mast starts to kind of kick at the cougar and say keep it away please and it's eating the poop. I don't want this. It's not happy. He kicks at it. Hey! Hey! Arr, he kicks at it. Arr, he kicks, arr. I'm like arr, and I like push him. You push Ross Bob. All right. Yes. You shove him and. With the poop slick deck, he is going to take a dexterity test. Fuck. I will roll two d six, and he is at a minus one because of the uh, the poop deck. <laughs> and it's he fails. So you actually, I am not even kidding you. It's a six and a one, <laughs> and at minus one, it's a six. So you shove Ross Bob, and he starts to slip, and he actually falls over the side. And can I, uh, can, I can I push him? And then right as he's about to touch. I, I prevent him from jumping in the poop. So you want to do an action where you shove him, but then grab him before he falls like, out into the water? Oh, it's in the water? I pushed him in the yeah. water? No, I, I just wanted to push him like on the deck. Just like, hey, don't touch my don't touch my cougar kind of thing. Yeah, but then he slipped mm-hmm. on the poop and is now okay, falling. Okay, so I'm catching him so he doesn't fall in the water. <coughs> okay, I will let you do a, a strength test at... Uh, no. Yeah, do okay. a strength test. Well, it might even be a hack and slash. Yeah, that's probably better, isn't it? Because it's a grab. Yeah. So I think that's just 2d6 plus your strength modifier, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Zero. Ooh. So <laughs> this is fantastic. So you shove him. He starts slipping on the poop, and he goes over the boat. You reach out to grab him, but you too slip on the poop. <laughs> and uh, you actually fall off the boat as well. So the only person... Uh, well, actually, Fawn, covered in shit, is on the boat. And uh, Finkelmer, not covered in shit, but having some shit seep through his cloak. He does. Ew. Shit. I strip he off. Did- if I have poop on me, I'm taking off the clothes that have poop on them. All right. The topless, gorgeous Finkelmer now is uh, standing on the ship proudly, and you're with the cougar. Ross Bob, as a man of the sea, is an excellent swimmer. Uh, who f- He falls over, but immediately kind of grabs the side of the boat. And uh, being the selfless, good man that he is, dedicated to years of loving labor, despite being shoved, reaches out and tries to grab um, Ur to get her Aww. on. 
I toss them mm. a rope from the deck. To help so he them. reaches for you, or what do you do? Yeah, I reach for him too. I accept. <laughs> he pulls you close, and you're now within his, you. within him, and he looks at you and he says, "I forgive you." And then he pushes you up onto the boat. And I don't understand what he said. <laughs> <laughs> it is worth noting, Er, that now you are covered in water, so your body is known to everyone. You are soaked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Would you and now my, like describe your my body? Hoodie, my body? hoodie is off. Well, I have uh, all uh, red hair. But they're super wet, super long because I don't know how to take care of them. So they're like, like all like this. And uh, I have a bunch of um, clothing strapped around me to hide my breasts because I don't know what that is and it hurts when it moves. So I just like, okay. I the strapped it. Five, with, yeah. yeah, for uh, like uh, Fawn gave me clothing because I didn't know what it was before. So she taught me how to... I don't, I don't wear it. And um, again, like I was saying, my buddy is super, super uh, in shape because I basically do everything, everything physically. Uh, and that's it. And I'm like, I, as soon as I get out of the water, I just, and I try to hide myself and I go like in a corner and I feel super guilty. And I'm like, and I go to I my bring the, and I start petting. I go to you and I bring the cougar and I like kind of make a little reconforting like yeah. shelter of three people like we did in the caves back in the day. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, it's going to be okay. I'm like, Savali, Savali. Oh, okay, Ross Bob pulls himself up onto the boat, shakes his head. His beanie is gone. Uh, it was lost in the fall. And his hair immediately repoofs out. In in fact, maybe even larger. <laughs> and he says, "Guys, I uh, let's just get you to land. Pay me the gold, and uh, let's be done with it." And then I yell, "Sylph, Sylph, Sylph!" And I point at. Blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm okay, baby. Let's just get out up here. 